Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. We've got Tamara Prusner with us today. She is a fantastic nature, wildlife, storm chaser photographer, and she is your judge today. She's going to be actually revealing her grand jury winner, as well as some runner-ups. We'll be talking about the amateur winner and the people's choice. This is going to be about wet surfaces. So um, to get started here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you. This is the wet surfaces photo contest. So the grand juror winner is going to win a fisheye wide angle lens an exclusive blog feature on ViewBug and 250 reward points. Uh, we also have a view, uh, people's choice. So the people voted and that person will get a fisheye wide angle lens as well, 250 reward points. And also we have an amateur winner as well. So, um, this is going to be very, very exciting. And I want to tell you a little bit about Tamara. I'm going to go ahead and introduce her to you, and then she can talk a little bit about herself as well. This is her website. It's through Tam's Eyes. And she is a resident in Texas. And you'll have to check out her website. She's got beautiful images. And she's, you know, Tamara, you're one of those people that takes a variety of types of photography. You're not just portrait or macro or landscape. You pretty much do it all, right? I do. I do. Well, at least I try to. Um, I started out um, way back when, <laughs> like 2001, uh -huh. um, up in West Texas, actually, up at, in Lubbock. And I had to take a class for um, my major, and it was a black and white film class. And at that point, you know, she just, our, our teacher had us doing all sorts of things. Well, once I finished up college. I then worked for a portrait studio for a while, and that's where I got my base in portraiture. We moved out to Arizona, and I decided I didn't want to do portraiture anymore. I wanted to do nature. And so then I became um, known uh, later as the floral queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, beautiful. I'm looking at some of your images now. They're great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And then from there, I decided, you know, I'm, I, um, Google Plus happened, and I started uploading images there, and I, I quote unquote, met Verena and Jay Patel, and I loved their landscape images, and I wanted to learn how to do those kinds of things, because it was, I'd already conquered portraiture, I conquered macros and flowers, landscape portrait or pictures seemed to be the, the next step, and so I jumped into to that following their stuff and picking their brains and learning and learning and learning and getting to where I wanted to go with that. And of course, when you go with landscapes out in the desert during the summer, you have the storms, which is what you're showing now. Yes. And it's, that was the next step for me was to start capturing storms and lightning and the amazing things that mother nature can do. These are incredible. Um, Gosh, look at that. <laughs> I'd be really nervous, <laughs> but uh, it's probably worth it. <laughs> Most of these I did, I do tend to use, um, well, until recently, I used my uh, 18 to 200 lens. Mm -hmm. That way I wasn't that close to the storm sim or that close to the lightning that was striking. With the Arizona monsoon storms, you can pretty much count on them being regular as to where the lightning is going to strike. And you, you can plan for them much better than you can a lot of other types of storms. Well, I storm chase with my kids, and so I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to put my kids in danger. But like this one right here that you're showing, mm -hmm. that one, we had the kids in the truck, which is the safest place during a lightning storm if you're doing this kind of stuff. But this one I used my 10 to 16 Tokina lens and it was at 10 millimeters and there's no cropping on this. Okay. And we were just that close and down low because there's, as you can see, there's nothing out there that would yeah. take the hit before my metal tripod. Yes, right, exactly. <laughs> wow. Well, th these are great. Your images are just fantastic. And you're, you know, you are the perfect judge to actually be um, judging this contest, which is called Wet Surfaces. This is our contest here. Now, tell me, Tamara, what, when you see that title, Wet Surfaces, what does that imply to you? For me, it says that the subject or the story of the photo needs to be centered 
on something that is wet. Not, it, it needs to be got like everything around it is wet, but the, the story of the photo is actually dry or the surface is actually dry, but other things are wet. The story needs to be about something that is wet. And, right. and that's how I narrowed down a lot of my images is, you know, when I look at this image, does this say, okay, this is definitely about something that is wet or is this, or is the being wet secondary to whatever the story is? Right. That's great. And for those of you watching this, it's, I think it's just such a wonderful educational opportunity to see through a judge's eyes. You're seeing through Tamara's eyes and what she, you know, really finds in winning images. And she's also going to pick up some runner ups to show you as well. And she'll be talking about those. So let's go ahead. Um, if you're ready, we're going to go into our first one that you selected as a uh, sure, runner up sure. here. So this is called Another World. And tell us what, what made you stop and say, hey, this is a great runner up. One of the things that I love about this image is I really love the, the, the two-tone color here, the blue and the black. And I mean, you've got the white in here, but even the white has got tones of that pretty blue in it. And it really, to, to me, it really said, it, it was more of a, hey, look at me. As you know, a lot of pictures um, can have lots and lots of color and still bring in a focal point. But sometimes when you've got so much going on, like you do in this image, I mean, you've, you've got lots of, I believe this is dandelion, right? You've got uh, lots of, you know, the little threads mm -hmm. and lots of water drops and lots of pretty bokeh in the back. And I mean, there's a lot going on in this image. And, you know, when this gentleman simplified it down, he made it much easier for me to see that it wasn't just about all the other pretty stuff that's going on in this image. Yeah, and also, you know, you, you mentioned about the tones in this image. It's beautiful, kind of monochromatic here. If it had color, you might not notice those textures quite as much. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You would not notice the smooth roundness of the water drops up against all those spiky bits yes. of the dandelion. Yeah, this is really, really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, Futka. <laughs> it's an interesting one. This was, this was, and I, I really had a hard time with this one because I wanted, it was one of the ones that I was like, okay, is this going to go in as, a, as, you know, one of the top three to pick from or what? And the, I really like it. I do. But there wasn't more to this story. For me, this one needs a little bit more of a story to go higher. It's a great image. And I think it would do really well as like a stock image, but as just an art piece, for me, it didn't speak as much. You, you know, you've got down here at the bottom, you've got it going out of focus mm -hmm. due to the depth of field and the angle that the camera was held at. I, I think there could have been some things that could have pushed it up higher for me, but I still really like the image. And that's, doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I have three kids right now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a very striking image and it's very, you know, the negative space. Uh, and stuff. It is. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's great. I, I wish, I wish there was more to this story because I, it does make me want to know more. Yeah. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Great. Okay. This one is called Lily. This one. I loved this one. Um, I have a lily of my own, and when she was about this age, I could totally see her doing this. <laughs> totally see my lily doing something like this. I love the color bits in this. Um, I think I the color bokeh parts, I love that she's pointing at the glass and looking out of it. it it's a great image, and I do like even the little bit of negative dark space, especially because it's she is so bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those eyes are nice and sharp. 
Uh, that's, no, they are. Yeah, they are. Really nice. And you were saying about the last image that might have needed a little bit more storytelling, something to go with it. This one seems to have a lot of story. I mean, you're kind of wondering what she's looking at or pointing it, at, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, is she, point, is she pointing outside to something? What is? What could she be pointing to? The dog? Is the dog doing something funny? <laughs> is there a cat or a bird out there that she has spied or, or a balloon even? I mean, there's lots of possibilities in yeah. this story. Yeah. That's great. Very, very charming. <laughs> okay. And then we got this one, Wild Orangutan with Baby Under the Rain. Oh, yes. I saw this one. This one really pulled at my heartstrings. But I'm a big orangutan fan. Ah, okay. <laughs> I do. Nice. And this, one, this is a sweet image. And I, I actually went and read kind of the background of this image. And she was, this lady was traveling in the forest and happened to spot this. And I think that's sometimes knowing the background like that really does add to the story of the image itself. Mm -hmm. Like it makes it seem so much more possible that this mom is sheltering her baby underneath her arms out of the rain. Yep. Yeah. Cute little eyes there, you know, um, and let's just talk technically just a little bit. I, I just noticed that there's, you know, a little green area here, a little green there area. There is, there so, is. So um, can you, can you, let's talk technically a little bit. Um, when you're looking, when you're looking at a picture, do you automatically see things like um, maybe noise or objects that could have maybe been cloned out of the way? Does that, that affect your judging of picking a good image? It does. It does. One of the things when I was first, um, way back when um, a friend of mine and I started doing a critique my image kind of show where we would bring in um, a photographer who is very well known and we would have people submit their images and he would go through or she would go through and they would critique these images and not only did she and I learn a lot from watching the photographer critique but we learned a lot from the people who were submitting and, and why they did this well one of the photographers um colby brown actually mm -hmm. one of the things that he was telling us was that he always watches the sides of the image you don't want to have things like those two little green spots that you pulled up you don't want to have things like that there because those detract from your story in the image itself. So you want to make sure you have clean edges around. And that, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to whistle there. That would totally help this image. If you could take out those two spots, that would, that would really make this image a little bit more impactful because you don't have something distracting you from what you want your viewer to see. Yeah, good, good point. That's very good. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. This is the source of hope. A pretty green <sighs> apple there. Tell, tell apple, us, yes. Tell us why this captured your attention. Well, I love the color, the mm -hmm. vibrant green. It, you know, Granny Smith apple right here. This has got to be a Granny Smith. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is so green, and I and I liked the idea of having this. I mean, you could picture this as being a rain-soaked apple, and that's, you know, we all have heard an apple a day keeps the doctor away, and so it brings back that kind of, of um, emotions for us. And when you can bring emotions to a person viewing your image, that is never a bad thing. It, it's mm -hmm. because it makes them see your image and remember your image, and that's what you want. That is, that's a very key thing. Yeah, uh, that's great. And then, you know, moving in, this is a really close macro. So you're really seeing, what, you know, the wet surfaces, right? Our title yes, of the, the yes. photo. Yeah, that's great. You, you really are. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay, this one's called Wet Leaf. Okay. This one, this one, I really liked this one a lot, actually, because it really, it really, to, in my mind, it really screamed wet surface. Uh, it's, you've got, all of this rock and other dead leaves behind it and everything and you don't really see much of that what you see is this leaf covered in water drops and it's not so much the leaf that is the focus point here because you see all these light points against a dark surface and the light points are the water drops 
Right. Yeah, that's really a lovely image. And it really captures your eye. You know, as I was scrolling through some of these images, I had to stop at this one because you're looking at it, trying to decipher, okay, is that a leaf on top of a leaf or, <laughs> and then all these exactly. water droplets? It's great. Exactly. It's one of those ones that mm -hmm. makes you stop. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Oh, gosh, this one. This is a partial back of wet daisy. Oh, I loved yeah. this one. This is another one that made me stop. And it was for, for me, it was actually the colors that made me stop on this. Because you've got these, these colors that on this petal that of course, Mother Nature does this perfectly. It, you know, she does it with symmetry. That I love that. And I love that, um, you know, you've your edges, you've, you've done the edges on the purple green line. That's, that's, mm -hmm great you know it's just things that i could say is that you've got one end of a petal down below but you don't have the top petal all the way in mm -hmm. those are the nitpicky things that can make or break you and I, and i would you know this is the kind of image that if you tweaked it just a little bit it would be absolutely positively more phenomenal than it already is i already love the image but it's just those little bits of, of change that would push this image far and beyond. Yeah. Tamara, what do you think about um, this area here? Not quite in focus compared to the rest of the image. Does that um, I, bother it you? It bothered me. Oh, okay. I, I will be honest. It does bother me okay. some um, simply because you've got these water drops and the petals so sharp. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would have picked a higher um, aperture just so that, Am I saying that right? Higher yep. aperture? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I would have because having this this one corner be so out of focus, it, it's it's just it's it's one of those things that I mean it, it's a tough decision, and I th I think that I would have I think I would have left it in focus, mm -hmm. and you know the other thing is 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 like we were saying before is watch your background I can see on my monitor where there's spots of light in this image if that's the other thing if you take those spots of light, light out so it's completely black image or I'm sorry black background mm -hmm. this is an, that's another one of those little things that will push the image yeah. way up it's already a great image but those are the few changes that I would make on it yep oh that's great good tips Okay, and then we've got this one. This is an honorable mention. I know you had kind of a tough decision when you were I <laughs> deciding. I did. <laughs> it was hard because I love this image. I, I love this image. Mm -hmm. It has got your Fibonacci spiral going on in it perfectly. It has got these rainbow of colors that are echoed in these water drops. I mean, it really is a fantastic image, even though truthfully this is a very simple image it's nothing complex it's nothing really hard to do but it is the the rainbow colors and the fibonacci spiral it's i love this image mm -hmm. i do yeah sometimes simple is better in some cases and i think it you're is. right it With is. this it really works yeah because you're really focused on the colors and the the mm -hmm. circles mm -hmm. that's great very very nice okay um so now we're going to reveal the amateur winner this is an amateur winner uh, that was picked by a view bug. This is for the non-professionals. So this is a beautiful image here. Um, Tamara, what do you think about this one with the snail? I liked this one. When I saw it, I did, I did like it a whole lot. I liked the lighting on the snail and how everything else is kind of secondary. I liked that the leaves are kind of, if you can see I know I can see on my monitor but you can see in the background all of the leaves are pointing to the shell that's fantastic use of leading lines mm -hmm. I love that I absolutely love that that's great yeah really nice and you know this is dead center the snail is dead center does that bother you at all it is you know sometimes sometimes it bothers me okay but sometimes rules need to be broken and I think with this case you know I've I tried cropping, you know, cropping. I used my hands or a sheet of paper to crop on my monitor. And I've looked and looked, and I really don't think that you could have cropped this on 
one of the rule of thirds lines and have as good of an image because you would have lost leading lines everywhere. And those leading lines, sometimes like with um, like a bicycle tire, you've got the spokes leading to the center and you're not, your eye naturally follows those spokes to the center. Sometimes that's the best place to have your main subject. Right, especially if it's purposeful. I mean, I can tell that, you know, this person, it looks like Michelle, who took this image, this was done on purpose. She wanted your eye to really mm -hmm. go to the snail. Like you said, those nice leading lines leading right to it. So I think that yes. works. That's great. The leading lines, the light, the way she, and you know, it may, she may have not actually just lit up the snail, though it does look like there might have been a flash used on it. Um, even if she just did it in post-processing, post where she added um, a slight vignetting around all the edges to kind of make it darker, it's it really helped this image with the snail being in the center. It just makes it all cohesive and come together nicely. Yeah, great. Yeah, it kind of spirals too, right dead it center, does. doesn't it? <laughs> that Fibonacci spiral. I'm go. telling you, that thing's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, uh, the next one we're going to reveal is the People's Choice, uh, and that would be this one, which is an absolutely beautiful image. So, and, and Tamara, you're a nature photographer too. Tell, tell us about this and why you think that the people chose this particular image. Well, how fun is this image first? <laughs> I mean, seriously, who doesn't love watching birds play in water. <laughs> I mean, they make the funniest moves, and especially when you capture something like this, it, you know that this bird's mama is going, look, I told you not to play in the water. <laughs> Somebody's going to catch you funny. But it's, I, I love it. I love the movement that has been frozen here for us. We, we really get a sense of, of being there. And yeah, this image is a little bit more on the thirds than it is, you know, dead centered, but it works really, really well here because you also have this nice curve of, you know, going from the water up to the bird's back up out to the beak. I mean, it's just, it curves it very nicely and brings the whole subject t together. I love the colors in this. Mm -hmm. This image would be good as a black and white but as color, it works so much better. You know, and I really love the perspective. I mean, you're at eye level with this little bird. Yes, yes. That makes such a and difference. And you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what, is, was this a kingfisher? Is that what I I believe saw? it is, yes. Okay, so I'm, I've never seen a kingfisher in real life, so I have no idea how big this bird might be. Is it, you know, the size of a sand crane, or is it more of the size of, like, a probably, robin? Probably like a crow. A crow? Okay. Yeah. But, but this perspective makes it seem like almost bigger than life to me. It, you get right in there and you get to see all this great detail. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. And that's a real tip for um, wildlife photographers is trying to get at eye level. And even with portraits, right? With, with kids oh, yes. and dogs. And... Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Do not shoot down. Do not shoot up. <laughs> you don't want to be looking up somebody's nose or down somebody's blouse. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good words of wisdom. Okay. Fantastic. Well, congratulations to Jamie. This is a, a beautiful image. Okay. So yes, the next one. Congratulations. Yes. The next one we're going to reveal is the grand jury winner. This is Tamara's pick. And so we're ready, everyone, to reveal this one. Okay. Here we go. Uh, that would be every turn of the face can help to break. So congratulations, Tamara. Tell us all about this image. What What is it about this particular image over the many that you had to choose from made oh, you say this so is the one? <laughs> it was so hard. <laughs> I love, for this image, I love the emotional response that I had looking at this image. And out of all of them, I had a much bigger emotional response to this. You know, it's something that, you know, our audience needs to remember is that just because I say that's what wins with me does not mean that that's what wins with every judge out there. Judging is so subjective and it's, it really, it's, it's what the photographer who's judging perceives and that's how people become winners. For me, this image, there's this great lighting on this woman in this image. She, her face is lit nicely. Her hand is lit nicely. You have got this window or door or or it could even be like a shower glass door. I'm not sure. 
but she's got this wet surface that is completely in focus and she's got her hand pressed up against it and she's got this very solemn look that you can just barely see because I mean you've got the water drops to look through and then you've got her that she's actually out of focus but it with the lighting and the solemn look and the hand on the glass and then the conversion to black and white gives this image a very classy feel that is I mean it's kind of a punch in the gut kind of feel mm -hmm. that I got with this image it's very dramatic uh, with the the converting to black and white and talk about a storytelling image Tamara do, how, what do you feel when you look at this what do you think the story is well if you also read this person's title and I'm not sure if Hugus is male or female I did not go that far into the profile but reading the title and you know every turn of the face can help to break and then seeing the image it comes across as a very sad image that something has happened and it's almost heart heartbroken mm -hmm. this woman and it's to me that emotion comes through clearly even if I hadn't seen the title I can see the emotion very clearly and it's it brings me in and it wants I want to know more why is she so sad why is she turning her face away you know what has happened in this woman's life that has made things so rough those are the kinds of things that for me when I'm judging are important things because it tells a story and I firmly believe that if you're going to shoot an image tell a story with that image don't just take a picture of a pretty sunset and call it good give something to the to your viewers because they'll come back and want more and that's what this has done for me I want to see more I want to know more about this image and this woman beautifully said I love that <laughs> the wet surface here it looks like tears to me uh, it does and, it's, and it, it could totally I mean you could totally go into that too with this I mean it's 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 one of those images it's just a punch in the gut yeah yeah that's very good okay well um, we want to thank everyone who participated beautiful images and like Tamara said this is her opinion of what is a great image I think Tamara you really were spot on on so many of these that you critique today and I hope that you, you folks learned you know a little bit too and took away some so uh, I want to thank you all for joining us Tamara thank you so much for your wisdom and thank uh, you so much for having me yes I hope we can do this again that was a lot of fun really appreciate it yes thank you <laughs> okay thanks everyone bye-bye <laughs>